I want to share with you some thoughts from 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 12. Some of these are old thoughts and some of these are new thoughts. Ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. Verse 13 as well, I'll go ahead and read. Now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. There's some two key words here that I want to uh, highlight. The first, of course, is, is straightened. Paul's giving the Corinthians a diagnosis of themselves. You are straightened in your own bowels. You're not straightened in us. You're straightened in your own bowels. Uh -huh. And so straightened um, means restricted. You're being restricted, not in us, but in yourselves. You're, you're being limited is another way of saying it. You're being held back. You are living and tasting and experiencing and seeing under what's available to you. Less than your potential. You are straightened. You're being, you're handicapped. Mm -hmm. But your handicap, their handicap was not in Paul. It was not, not in Apollos. It wasn't in Cephas. It was in themselves. They were handicapped. So they were, they were lacking. They, they didn't have things. They didn't possess things that they could possess. Not because of the, of the apostles, but because of themselves. So they are straightened in their, in their own bowels. Now, this is a word that we don't, uh, we don't use the, in the way that Paul did here. We don't use it anymore, but it's a good word. It's, a, it's, it's rich in meaning. Some other versions say affections. You're straightened in your own affections or your desires. So here, the diag this is the diagnosis, remember. You're, you're being limited by your own desires. You're not being limited by something outside of you. You're being limited by something inside of you. You're being limited not by the other person, but by your own person. You're being limited in your own hunger. Jesus promised, uh, blessed are they who hunger and thirst, for they will be filled. But what, what about those who don't hunger and thirst? They're straightened. They're limited. They're held back. They're handicapped. And they, they are, they're lacking. They don't have it because they don't want it. That's, a, that's another way of saying it. So it's not because of the other guy. Or it's not because the, well, the, the, the church or because of the preacher or, or anything. This is the real diagnosis right here. And I believe that the Holy Spirit provides us these types of uh, diagnoses. Because without them, we would be uh, severely handicapped in, in examining our own selves. And so Paul's helping the Corinthians to examine themselves. You're restricted, not in us, but in your own bowels. Yeah. And so why are you lacking? Look inside. It's not because the Lord's hand is so short he can't get it to you. It's not because the Lord's ear is dull and he can't hear your cry. You don't have it. You have not because you ask not. Mm -hmm. That's another way of saying this. So the... the um, Bowels are affections or desires or love or what you're longing for. You're, you're not seeking it because you don't want it. You're not uh, following after it because you don't, you don't want it. So the apostles um, were not restricting them. Of course, I mean, Paul could have given them, he, Paul could have said to them, like Jesus said, I have many things to say unto you, but you can't bear them now. And so Paul didn't say it until they, they were, would be able to bear it. Now, I want to uh, provide some contrast to this uh, text. You're, you're limited. You're being held back by your own affections. But at the same time, nothing can separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. So just think about with, this, with these things contrasting one another. They're, in Christ, you are not limited by somebody else, but you are limited by your own bowels. But at the same time, nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. So consider, what, what conclusions can we make from that? Consider the, the power of your own affections. Amen. Nothing, sword can't separate me, death can't separate me, angels can't separate me, but I can limit my own self in my own bowels. Here's another consideration. I will not fear what man can do unto me, but you should fear what your affections can do to you. You can, you can harm yourself 
much greater than other people can harm you. Because you can be limited, restricted in your own bowels, in your own affections. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. But at the same time, we have this, this liability of being restricted in our own bowels, in our own affections. But if we resist the devil, he'll free, flee from us. But then at the same time, we could be restricted in our own bowels. So in um, tying all these thoughts together in conclusion, uh, we have this promise, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. That, that's like the anecdote to this. If you're being limited in your own affections, then delight yourself in the Lord. And to the person, see, the, the, the door of, uh, of transmission between the Lord and people is wide open when the people delight themselves in the Lord because the Lord's not going to give what they don't want. When a person get, when a person in Christ walking by faith gets to a point where they want approval by God and fellowship with God and understanding of God more than anything else, then that's the key. That's what triggers the flow. Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. This is why Jesus told Mary uh, that she hath chosen the, the good part and it won't be taken from her. She wasn't being, she wasn't restricted. She wasn't being held back. She, she let, let other things pass by and other things go unattended because she, because the better part, the greatest part was there within. And so she, she didn't, she didn't restrict herself. And so, um, and hope is an anchor of the soul. Hope anchors because when you want the things of God and the things of the world to come, when you desire the world to come more than anything else, then it anchors you. In other words, you won't be mo- you, nothing else can move you from that because your affection is involved in it. And so we shouldn't be surprised then when the, when the devil tries to uh, divide your affections, dilute your affections, distract your affections, uh, infiltrate your affections, turn your affections away. This is your desires, your bowels, as Paul said it here, is like one of the prime targets for the wicked one. And so this is such good, uh, such good revelation from the Apostle Paul in diagnosing not just the Corinthians, but men in general. You're not, you're not, um, you're not straightened by people outside of you, but be warned that you can be straightened by what's inside of you. And so one of the functions of our assembly, and a, and a lot of us have expressed this, is how much your affections can grow mm-hmm. and, and expand while you're in the assembly because we're being provoked by, by fellowship of the brethren. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're thankful for your word and the light that it gives us. We pray, Lord, as we have met together, that we would uh, give more earnest heed uh, to this light uh, that is shining. We ask that uh, the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts And the melodies that we make in song with one another would be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.